10-year plan that we have to think about is what are we doing for our students today that will prepare them and what will it do 10 years for them now? And really kind of how does this impact the practice that we're doing right now? How does that actually um, think about this? And this is why I've always talked about the notion of engagement and moving to empowerment. And I used to say engagement versus empowerment. And I don't believe in that because I think it's a progression. And the thing I always say is that if you're engaged, it doesn't mean you're empowered, but if you're empowered, it guarantees you're engaged. And it's like, really, how do we give our students ownership over their practice? How do they figure out their own pathway? And I'll give you an example of like a mistake in my career and, you know, kind of thinking back, cause I like to point fingers at myself, not anyone else. So you look at, uh, I look at my first year of teaching and I'll tell you, like I was not, um, I, I, the things I knew about education, I know way more now, obviously, right. As you should, as you, you know, go into education and I, but I, the kids in my class that year, they love me and they love me because I was really funny. I could tell great stories. Uh, I was very conversational. I could take really boring content and make it super fun, right? And exciting and stuff like that. And I remember, I could just remember some days these kids would just be like so enthralled and just so engaged with everything I would say. And, you know, I just, I can have that personality sometimes, right? And thinking about that year and I was like, you know, pretty, pretty proud of like, hey, I did pretty good as a first year teacher. And those kids went to grade five and I remember someone coming to like Mr. Kroos, like, Oh, we miss you so much. Our teacher is like so boring. They like make us do work and they make us like figure stuff out on our own. And we got to like learn all these things. And I'm like thinking about this. I was like, oh, like, what have I done? I have made these kids so dependent on me being funny and telling little stories and things like that, which I'm not saying you shouldn't do, but they became so dependent upon that, that it was just like, they could just sit back and soak in what I said, but they would actually not actually go figure out stuff on their own. And I think about sometimes our helpfulness when we overdo it can lead to a helplessness to our kids be able not to figure out their own pathway. And of course, we want to like, you know, remove as many barriers for our kids as possible. I, I know I do this as a dad, but I'm very cognizant that I, you know, want to make sure um, there's obstacles that sometimes we put up in front of our kids so they learn how to deal with it. And I, I can't remember the exact thing. I remember reading it somewhere. It's like, do we prepare are the road for the child or the child for the road. And I think that's a really powerful thing. And I remember actually um, one year I had some uh, really incredible math students in my class and this is grade nine and I would give them stuff that was being done at the grade 11, 12 level. And I would tell them that. And I would say like, hey, figure this out. And they're like, well, this is not, this is not for our grade. And I said, I know. I said, figure it out though. And they're like, well, why don't you teach it? I'm like, no, I'm not gonna teach you, you figure it out. And they were like so frustrated and mad and upset about it. And then they finally figured the stuff out way beyond, you know, what the curriculum was telling them. And I remember they were like, Mr. Gross, like we got it. This is like, and they were just so amazed by that. And they learned. And what I try to teach them is that they can figure this stuff out on their own. They can figure out their own pathway. And I think as teachers, that's something that we want to do is that 10 years from now, are we putting our kids in a situation where they're not dependent upon us, where they don't need us to clear the pathway from? Because guess what? We're not going to be there for them for their whole lives. They're not going to be able to, you know, go through this. So it's like really thinking about that 10 year plan is what are we doing for our kids today that will serve them tomorrow? That's the 10 year plan that we should be focusing on is like how, what are the practices that we're doing? How does this prepare kids to not just, you know, for the real world, which I think is, you know, part of life, but also to make the real world better. And that means that they're gonna have to have ownership, not just to kind of go do stuff for other people, but to actually create their own pathway moving forward.